Is vocabulary your forte or your fort? English uses historical spelling. It tends to preserve the original pronunciation of loan words, but not always. And some words have alternate pronunciations. Does your house have a foyer or a foyer? Does your computer have cache memory or cache memory? Some words are used only in a certain niche. Niche. So you're bound to get confused sometimes. Then you have a linguistic phenomenon called metathesis. Huh? Sometimes mispronunciations can spread throughout a community of speakers and even change the language. All right, let's take a look at some pronunciation issues in English, including metathesis. Hey, linguophiles, I'm Mark Franco. Welcome to Snap Language. This video is in no way meant to mock how anyone pronounces certain words. The fact is that you often hear people pronounce some words in different ways, and you end up not knowing for sure if the word has alternate pronunciations, like data, data, the British data, or if one of them is actually a mispronunciation. Some words are just plain weird because of their spelling. <laughs> the typical example is Worcestershire sauce. You look at the way it's spelled for help, but actually, the spelling is the source of a confusion. Let's break it down. New Hampshire. We all know how to pronounce the shire part of New Hampshire. In the UK, a shire is akin to a county in the United States. When it's part of a name, you pronounce it as you do in New Hampshire, not New Hampshire. This part is pronounced Worcester. Worcester. Put Worcester and Shire together, you get Worcestershire. Worcestershire sauce. Just don't look at the name on the bottle, it'll mess you up. Some mispronunciations come from other words that are very similar. The Italian coffee beverage is an espresso, which actually shares the same etymology as express, meaning to press or squeeze out. In Italian, this X sound in Latin changed to an S or Z sound, so you have example, esempio, exist, esistere, expressed, espresso. Because you have express in English, people think the drink is an espresso which is a mispronunciation of espresso. Speaking of coffee, a related word is to percolate. Stimulate, simulate, regulate, then percolate? No, percolate. Instead of pressing the coffee out to make an espresso, you let hot water just drip down or percolate through the coffee grounds. People who deviate from accepted behavior are devious, right? They're also shifty. They come up with deceitful plans. Devious. A similar word is mischievous. Devious? Mischievous? Well, again, perhaps the similarity between these words ends up misleading people into thinking that mischievous is pronounced mischievous. Devious, hideous, but mischievous. A mischievous child had a devious plan to put Worcestershire sauce in daddy's espresso. If you've worked really hard and without taking a break, you say you've toiled without... Okay, again you have similar words here, despite, satellite, frostbite, but you also have words like definite, infinite, opposite. If you've only seen this word in writing, you'll probably just flip a coin, right? Respite? Um, I'm glad I'm not a gambler. You've toiled without respite. Let's talk about this word. I've actually had someone um, correct me in the comments before because I pronounced it hyperbole in a video. That viewer was really certain that the word was hyperbole. Sorry, bud. The spelling makes it look like hyperbole, but it's hyperbole. These similarities are not just in spelling, though. 
Words with similar or even identical pronunciations can throw us off too. If a strategy doesn't work too well, you try a different. Hmm. Tact is a fine word. Attack, like a pushpin. Well, yes, you try a different tact. You try a different course of action. Not tact, but tack. A different tack. Tact has to do with being tactful. Some mispronunciations happen because of a linguistic phenomenon called metathesis. A metathesis? No, metathesis. Metathesis is the transposition of letters, syllables, or sounds in a word. A common example is ask and axe. Believe it or not, this has been around since the eighth century. In Old English, both forms of the verb to ask already coexisted: askian and axian. This goes to show the metathesis has probably been around as long as language has existed. Asterisk, asterisk, no asterisk. Prescribe, prescribe, no prescribe. Integral, integral, integral. Introduce, introduce, introduce. Bird, brid. <laughs> no one would confuse bird and brid, right? Well, surprise, surprise. It's actually the other way around. Bird evolved from brid in Old English. Through the process of metathesis, the word brid became bird. I'm sure during the transition from brid to bird, some people must have said bird. This is just wrong. But bird won out over brid. In Old English, we also had forced, which became frost, nifra for never, and thirsk, which gave us fresh. How did we get from three to third? Yep. Third used to be thrida in Old English, and metathesis gave us third. Thurl is a hole in Old English. With metathesis, it became thrill. So nas thurl, literally the hole of your nose, became nas thrill, nostril in modern English. Yep, metathesis happened and. A mispronunciation gave us today's word nostril. Metathesis also happens in loan words. Tornado probably came from Spanish tronado, thunder. Metathesis of R and O, and boom, you have tornado. El lagarto, the lizard. Alligarto, um, metathesis, alligator. In vulgar Latin, turbulare meant to make trouble. That's where we got turbulent from. In Old French, tourblay had the idea of trouble. Through metathesis of u and r, they got troublay. So from Old French, English borrowed the metathesized word trouble and the non-metathesized word turbulent. Pretty cool, huh? And I can't believe from metathesis I just said metathesized and non-metathesized without blinking. These are big words. I think sometimes you just hear people pronounce words different ways, and you adopt one of them. And sometimes you happen to adopt the mispronounced version. The temporary memory in your computer is the cache memory, not cache. It's when you have prestige and influence that you have cache. Etc. is the original expression from Latin. Etc. Um. That's creative pronunciation. I'm not sure where that comes from. Realtor, not realtor. It's spelled realtor, right? Someone who sells real estate. A realtor. Some mispronunciations happen so often that they end up being accepted as alternate pronunciations. Remember, bread. Something you're really good at, your strong suit, is your fort. You'll rarely find people who say fort anymore, though. Most people say forte. If being a purist is your forte, go ahead and say fort, but don't expect other people to do so. 
You may think it doesn't sound purty, but it ain't gonna happen because you want it to. Chances are you say foyer. You know it sounds all French and fancy, but it's a foyer. These pronunciations are so common, they're both widely accepted now. So don't correct someone for saying foyer or a foyer. Both niche and niche have become accepted too, at least in American English. So whether you have a niche or a niche, have at it. I'm not sure about saying hyperbole, metathesis, or expresso though, we're not there yet with those words. Again, this is not intended to mock anyone for how they pronounce words. There's enough linguistic bias going around as it is, which is not okay. But sometimes pronunciation matters to people, depending on the social situation. Differences in pronunciation are part of the language. Mostly they result from natural linguistic processes that sometimes even reshape the language over time. After all, who determines how words are pronounced? It's the linguistic community using that language variety. If a particular pronunciation is shared by that community, that's pretty much it for that word. The solution for these pesky words? If you're in doubt and want to make sure you're saying it right, use a good dictionary. Thanks for watching.